Currently, uh, I go to Penn State Erie, uh, studying MIS there. Um, anybody who's ever seen the campus or been around that area, it's a hill. It's a definition of uphill both ways, so that's a challenge. Um, before that, I went to Hamburg High School. Um, I would play basketball and uh, did track. I was long, triple, and high jumper there. I was captain of the varsity basketball team as well as my JV team. Uh, before that, I went to St. Peter and Paul. Um, I did every sport offered, I think, except for hockey. Um, I think I was played three sports at one time when I went here. Um, also, while I was at Hamburg, I was involved in many different clubs, and uh, as well as the uh, life team here at uh, St. Peter and Paul. Uh, that was a big part of my life back then, it's just um, coming and doing these core team events, doing um, uh, Kingdom Bound, youth conventions, um, just going uh, and helping out at soup kitchens or any community service, and that was a big part of my life when I was in high school. And I encourage any of you who hear about these programs to definitely really think about going to them. Woke up that day to go surfing. All excited. Um, you know, me and my brothers were taking our lessons and standing up the first time. And uh, you know, I'm on this board, standing up every time. You know, not having any trouble with the surfing part, but my calf muscles were absolutely killing me. You know, almost like they're on fire, cramping up. My lower back is the exact same way. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with me? You know, I've been an athlete forever. This little bit of surfing here is, is killing me. It's, it's, this is unreal. I mean, I could, I could admit over the couple months before that I hadn't been doing a lot of uh, cardio work or, you know, a whole lot of strength training in my legs. And so I'm thinking, you yeah, know, my brothers have been in sports and they're, they're just more in shape than I am right now. That's why I'm getting tired. So... Now the lesson's over. The last time I go to, uh, to ride the board, I, I stand up on the board but immediately fall right off. And at the time I'm thinking, well, it's just a wave, I caught it wrong, but now I know it's, my legs really didn't want to work. <laughs> Get to the edge of the water, take the strap off my leg, go to stand up to carry the board, and it, it just wasn't happening. It, the strangest feeling I've ever had, not being able to keep yourself upright. So, there I am, kind of crawling in the water now, because when I was in the water, the water kind of helped me up and helped me move a little bit. So I crawled more. So like they said, the doctor came in and uh, put it very bluntly that I probably wouldn't walk again. And I broke down crying. And everybody's always asked me ever since, were you ever mad? Were you ever, you know, mad at God? Why me? Why me? And I always tell them about 45 seconds it was. And I was, I was like, what? What's the deal? But it was more misunderstanding of what the situation was, not really having all the information that, that made me wonder why, why I was, I was paralyzed. Why I was, you know, I was, I'm an athlete. I, you know, I've got all this going for me. I'm going back to school. Why, why now? Why me? But like I said, it's 45 seconds. That's like, well, this is pointless. Why am I, why am I going to sit here and dwell on this? It's only going to make things worse. You know, I mean, it's, you're not, you're only going to, you're only going to hinder the progress of, of moving on with, with the situation. My father Paul Slim, he used to uh, be a parochial rich and uh, he would come in almost every day and take time out of his schedule to come and talk to me and pray with me. And after he was there a few days and, and kind of got a sense of where I was, he asked me a question before he left. He's, he says, uh, why do you feel that you're able to get through this as well as you can? Why are you as positive by you, as you are? Why?" Why are you able to accomplish this with such 
a strong attitude towards the positive and have no negative in you. And I'm sitting there thinking, I really don't know. I, I couldn't give him an answer right then. So every day for about a week, he would come in and ask me the same thing. And I, I, you know, I thought about it, prayed about it, and really couldn't, couldn't come up with an answer. So at the end of the week, he, he asked me, he's like, he said, I'm not, I'm not leaving here until you give me an answer, because I know you know what the answer is. So I looked at him and said, I think it's just me. It's what I have learned. It's where I have come from, from my family background, from my background in, in being a part of the religious ed program here, being part of the life team, having a real strong connection with God and the Holy Spirit. And, and like I said, having that support of my family throughout everything that I have ever done. And he he kind of looked at me and said, well, that's what I was hoping you would say. It's, and from there, it was, it kind of really set into me that uh, there, there's definitely something more there helping me. That it, it was the higher power, it was, it was God right by my side wanting me to accomplish this, wanting to give me a mission to do something, to do something great. Eventually the doctor comes in near uh, the end of my therapy and uh, he tells me uh, he believes that I have this mass in my spinal cord from the Epstein-Barr virus, which is mono, which most people know more than Epstein-Barr. Um, and he says that the virus got into my spinal cord and my white blood cells, instead of getting rid of it like they normally do, formed a mass around the virus and just kind of encapsulated it. And then while I was surfing, it caused this mass to compress my spinal cord. So they kind of then tell me, well, this mass can go away on its own. The body could heal itself, or it may not. And once it, the mass goes away, now you have to use your, your uh, nervous system has to regenerate itself. And they, they kind of gave it a time for me about a year. But that year is gone. And I really, it doesn't bother me at all. Two grown men coming to grips with how much their mothers mean to them. And a <laughs> tear in your eye, Josh, I saw that when your mother was talking about you know, what she was going through. And she was laughing a little bit, but what does Mother's Day mean to you now that you've gone through? these tragedies in your life? Um, I can't say it's, just, it's not just Mother's Day. And it's not just Father's Day, it's, it's everything. You know, my parents are there constantly supporting me with whatever I want to do, no matter what it is. They're, they're just always there. So it, I mean, obviously Mother's Day is a special day. It's, the day set aside, but it's just a day. It's just a day. It's all. It's every day should be parents' day. Every day should be family day. It really should. Um, it's Mother's Day every day for my mom. You know what I'm <laughs> okay, so It was uh, great to hear your story. You know. I'm always telling my eyes, so it's always good to hear another great story of, you know, overcoming adversity, man, you know. You still fight the battle, man, it's not over with, and because you are steadily inspiring people just with, you know, events like this, and there's many more to come. That's God's calling for both of us out there, and, uh, you know, just, just like you said, God put us here for a purpose, and, we, and that's to serve Him, and, and this, is our, this is our calling right here to, you know, inspire others, you know, just put some positivity in their lives. And I uh, just want to just thank you. Uh, just for, man, you're an inspiration to me too, man. I, I used to tell people that all the time.